Hi, in this video we are going to talk about arrays and data structures. But before we dive in, let me introduce you to my learning data structures and algorithms course. It's completely free and it will stay that way forever. So don't wait any rule now to learn more. You will find the link to the course in the video description below. The first question that we are going to ask is what are arrays? Arrays are a collection of items of the same type, usually. The second point about arrays is they are linear data structure. So what do we mean by that? We mean by that that the elements are put or represented in a sequential in a sequential manner, like in a sequential uh, fashion, one after the other, like in the example here, we have elements that they are represented one after the other. And the third characteristic about arrays is that they are contiguous. And we mean by contiguous that they are put in memory, like in adjacent locations. The final point, the final characteristic about arrays is that they have a fixed size. But there is a caveat here. Most programming languages now gives you the ability to create somehow dynamic arrays, like somehow dynamic. But the thing is that they are doing some heavy work behind the scene to make them look dynamic. So in our example here, we have an array of four or five elements. Each element in the array is identified by what we call an index. Starting from the index 0, then 1, then 2, and so on, until we reach the final, the final element in the array, which is going to be on the position n minus 1, n being the size of the array. So now, when we tell our programming language to create an array of five elements, so it's going to find or try to find a spot or a space in memory that is enough to allocate these elements or those successive elements. So in our case, let's assume that the memory in our case is divided into shelves of two bytes each. Now let's simulate the work of the programming language to create this array. So we will try to find enough space for the uh, arrays to be allocated. We start from the address 105. We have an empty space, but if we count, we have only three elements, three empty elements, which is not enough for our case. So then we move to the address 108, which is already taken. Now starting from the address 109, there is enough space for our array to be allocated. So we will put each element in the memory. So we have two, five, then one, then three, then eight. Now let's tweak this example a little bit. And let's assume that we are using JavaScript as our programming language. So let's first give a name to the array. Let's assume that the array's name is L. So L is going to be found at the address 109. Next, let's say that we want to add a new element to the array L. So we would use the instruction L push 50. And let's also assume that this space is already taken. So in this case, when JavaScript comes to the line L push 50, as the element, as the new element, it's going to find that there is no enough space because the space after the last element in the array is already taken. In this case, what is going to do? So, do you remember the heavy work that I've been talking about uh, when we have mentioned the dynamic aspects of arrays in certain or in most programming languages? So JavaScript now is going to try to find a new empty space or a new empty enough space for the uh, array to be allocated. So it's going to copy all these elements and let's say that we have found a new empty space at the address, uh, let's say, 130. 
So it's going to copy those elements here. And after that, it's going to add the new element, which is 50. Now the element 50 or the new added element is going to be found at the address 135, which means that from 135, we're going to make five, five jumpers or five steps. So basically that's it for the first question about what are arrays. Now let's move on to a new question, which is why do we need arrays? So to answer this question, let's see it from the perspective of a problem solver. The first benefit of using arrays is when you have many values of the same type. So instead of having like one variable for each value, you would have one variable for multiple values, values of the same type. The second benefit of using arrays is when you have a problem that you are trying to solve and requires you to, that problem requires you to access the data so frequently and it requires fast access to the data. So in this case, you might consider using arrays. Why? It's because that if you've ever watched the video that we had on uh, Big O Notation, we said that arrays have a constant time for accessing data so which is which makes them a good solution or a good data structure to use when we are facing such problems and the third point is that arrays are at the base of other data structures for example they are at the base of queues or stacks or even hash tables and many others Basically, this is it for the array data structure. However, before we finish this video, I would like to share with you an example of implementing the array data structure in JavaScript. You will find the link in the video description below. So that's it for today's video. I hope that you've learned something new today. Don't forget to like and comment this video and subscribe to the channel for new videos like this one. Thanks for watching and see you soon.